It's 5.45 p.m., which means it's time for BCTV's Nightly News Roundup. I'm Roland Boyden alongside Joe Bushy, and this is 5.45 Live. Joe, what do we got on deck tonight? All right. Tonight, VY all the way with footage of yesterday's protest walk, Aaron Gunderson at the River Garden, and the post-VY task force, plus Bernie Town meeting on dental care, the U.S. Open, and more. And remember, we try, anyway, and do it all in 15 minutes. So stick with us here on 5.45 Live. <laughs> Welcome back to 545 Live, uh, this March 12th, 2012 edition. That's the trailer for the family-friendly ballet documentary, Too Too Much, which shows tonight at the Latches Theater as part of the Women's Film Festival. In addition, there's an 845 showing. Also at the Latches of the Kevin Klein drama, Queen to Play. And as a bonus, I'll be working the door there at Queen to Play. So if you haven't had enough of uh, this face here by the end of the show tonight, come on down, see what promises to be a good flick, and support the Women's Freedom Center, a schedule for all films where and when to see them and how to support the cause at Women's Film Festival, all one word, no apostrophe, dot org. All right, Joe, I'll turn the stories loose for you here. All right, well, it's now been one year since an earthquake and tsunami tore through Japan, creating one of the world's greatest natural disasters in history, and one of the greatest unnatural disasters in history as well, as Japan's Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant suffered severe damages, releasing radiation that managed to make its way across much of the United States. To mark the one-year anniversary yesterday, protesters gathered outside Vermont Yankees' Vernon headquarters to demand the immediate discontinuation of operations of the state's lone nuclear plant. There's another seat, right? That seat's empty right there. This is the final point. The reactor here in Vernon, Vermont, is the same type of reactor as melted down in Fukushima. And I think it's important for people to be aware of that and to remember that, to honor the people in Japan, to remember the victims in Japan, and to continue to have our voices heard about what makes sense for us and for the future of our state and for our region. Vermont Yankee shares a Mark II reactor design with Fukushima, leading to much public speculation that a similar disaster could occur here uh, in this community. Fears that Vermont Yankee and the Nuclear Regulatory Commission engineers have dismissed, citing the plant's structural advantages over Fukushima and lessen environmental risk factors in New England. That's footage from uh, BCTV longtime producer, prolific producer, and occasional 545 Live content specialist Maria mm-hmm. Dominguez, who was on the march yesterday as well. Following the march, local residents gathered at the River Garden for a presentation by national nuclear engineer Arnie Gunderson. I'm Arnie Gunderson down from Burlington. What a turnout here. Um, I'm here to talk about Vermont Yankee and how it's almost identical to Fukushima. Next, the latest issue getting Bernie Sanders hot under the collar is dental care, teeth more specifically. Vermont's tenured independent senator held a town meeting for him in Montpelier over the weekend to discuss the nation's dental crisis. We have heard enormous amounts of debate about the health care crisis in America, but we have unfortunately not heard the equivalent type of discussion about the dental crisis in America and in Vermont. Uh, and it's high time that we did. Before the event, Sanders spoke with WCAX and Fox 44 saying, quote, it's an issue of huge consequence but does not get the attention that it deserves. According to the Fox 44 report, nearly 60% of all American children have cavities that go untreated because of a lack of dental coverage. I, for one, can attest to that. Time to get it uh, in in as part of the discussion. And now, of course, all this data that's coming out that uh, problems with teeth, plaque, and bacteria can actually uh, lead to things like heart disease. So, in essence, this is a health care issue. There's there's no line to be drawn. It's not rational. Yeah, right. There's no there's no rational health care line drawn between the the entire rest of your body and your mouth. Yeah, Yeah, that's just. Yeah, you know, it doesn't make sense, really. Moving on, more than 100 local residents attended the uh, service for longtime Brattleboro Area Drop-In Center director Melinda Busno, who passed away last Sunday after suffering a severe heart attack. Among the many speakers at the First Baptist Church on Saturday who shared stories of the one of the community's most recognized local heroes was Busno's daughter, Sarah Doyle, who told the gathering that, quote, at 5'2", she was a giant when she needed to put someone in their place. Uh, she'll be sorely missed in this community. 
Next, with attention now turned to Vermont's Public Service Board and Vermont Yankees' quest to secure continued operation, lawyers for the opposition group, the New England Coalition, have turned up what they believe to be a key sentence that could prohibit Vermont Yankee from moving forward. Coalition lawyer Jared Margolis presented to the Public Service Board at Friday's hearing in Montpelier, findings from one of the board's own orders, signed July 11, 2002, which reads, quote, Energy Nuclear Vermont Yankee, LLC, and Energy Nuclear Operations Incorporated are authorized to own and operate Vermont Yankee beyond March 21, 2012, solely for the purposes of decommissioning. At the hearing, which was held at the request of Energy, the Public Service Board revealed that they were considering reopening the record to allow new evidence and could call for another economic analysis of the impact of the plant's storage of spent fuel. And back to me to wrap up the stories and the many VY stories we have for tonight. The town's post-VY task force presented to the public for the first time this morning their findings from a year of studying the economic effects and mitigating strategies surrounding the closure of Vermont Yankee, I believe we've got a clip of that as well, courtesy of uh, BCTV Access Coordinator Frederick Noyce. Hopefully some elected uh, uh, officials in the county will, will, will look at this report and say that they want to get involved. And, and maybe there's another, this is my opinion, maybe there's another broader organization that comes together very quickly. That's Post-VY Task Force Chair Stephen Morse summarizing the group's findings since March of last year. Moving on, as promised, it's time to talk U.S. Open. That's as far as I got in the script. Oh, so for this, wing it with Joe. Yeah. Well, Joe went up to try and catch a little of the action at the U.S. Open on Saturday, and I uh, basically got there just in time to see them finishing off, and they uh, had some award ceremonies. We might have a few clips of that. I think Sean White took the men's half pipe on Saturday, and I believe Kelly Clark came in second, representing Dover and uh, the Vermont holding its wonderful own. state of Vermont. Let's take a look at that. It was at, a great uh, time, for yeah. sure. Just a few of the clips you got here. A little bit of the U.S. Open Stratton this weekend uh, footage from you, Joe. Uh, before we uh, head into the traffic weather thing that we often do, I just want to quickly mention, just in case there wasn't enough VY stuff in today's broadcast, uh, that on Thursday, March 15th, the Vernon Select Board, School Board, Principal, Police Department, Highway Department, Fire Department, Emergency Management, and Emergency Services all will meet with residents to outline what steps are being tape- taken to keep the disruption of daily lives uh, as minimal as possible. During so, the upcoming, upcoming anticipated right, so it's not included in the uh, press disruption uh, relative to the uh, yeah. anniversary of the closing date. So Yeah. And uh, now, what was the latest information on that? They Well, I, that? I guess they've uh, put some new barricades up on the old ferry road to basically uh, really, uh, you know, put the... Do the best job they can for access control around the VBI headquarters up there. I'm sure they don't want anything getting out of control up there. And, you know, I can understand that, so... Yep. Well, the, I'm hoping that will segue us into right. traffic as we uh, as we talk about barricades sure. and whatnot. Got the flat screen up here behind us. Uh, it shows a little bit of downtown. The code um, for anybody that hasn't watched uh, this part of 545 Live, we get so psyched for, um, is uh, that you've got three colors here on the map. You've got red, which uh, basically means that you're talking about uh, some... Uh, really standstill traffic, rough traffic. Orange, heavy volume, but it is good to go. And then from there, you've got green, which means you're flying, and that means we can take a look at downtown here. Um, High Street to Canal Street, this is really uh, the area that some people just don't want to mess with anymore. But we do have a line of orange coming through there, um, which uh, means that if you are going north, coming uh, up through Main Street, up through town on Putney Road, uh, you you are moving and you're stuck, man, if you're going south from High Street to Canal Street Malfunction Junction. You got a, a slice of the good stuff coming into town on High Street. Uh, if you're going back out, you get that heavy volume. Uh, Putney Road looks good to go in all directions. Uh, pretty, uh, pretty good. Often that's a block of orange. And uh, then, of course, we got 91 traffic goers. Good to go in all directions. So uh, enjoy your Monday commute home. That's uh, our Some traffic report. Some graphics there, Roland. <laughs> I uh, have enjoyed myself a little too oh, much yeah. with this one, but uh, I'm hoping we can start writing on uh, on all kinds of stuff as all far as the screen goes. Yep. Yeah, anytime we uh, we put right a thing on. up, could uh, write all over it. So. All right, traffic report. Uh, we got to touch on weather ever so briefly. If you want uh, oh. the kind of weather that. Um, 
kind of weather report where people stand in front of a green screen and stuff, you have only uh, four minutes to wait because BUHS TV is back. They do a killer weather report in front of their green screen. And what's a pretty cool little studio yeah. they got as part of their <clears throat> uh, communications class down there. Again, that's coming up uh, at 6 right after this show. You can check that out. But we do our own somewhat more low-tech, uh, somewhat more modest weather report here as well look at those temps it's it's pretty i mean like that's it's just sun all the way across what are we seeing 68 59 59 63 49 61 70 degrees a week from today that's what they're saying we're gonna get pretty hard to believe um and uh for anybody that was outside today it makes me sad that i work in an office but uh did manage to get outside for just a little bit and enjoy what has really folks really raking their lawns today un- unbelievable uh for march i i can only mm-hmm. I'm, I have this feeling, the sinking feeling that the other uh, shoe's going to drop and we may see oh, feet and feet there'll of snow. There'll be two feet of snow, yeah, yeah for sure, exactly. right? Don't put the shovel so, away yet. But uh, who knows? Enjoy it while it's out there. All right, that's that's all I got. Full lid, traffic, weather, all the usual shenanigans. Uh, but before we wrap, I will just say these few things. Meeting? Informational meeting? Oh, go. Oh, you committing. take it first. Yeah, <clears> then I'll Wednesday, do my thing. Uh, Wednesday at 6.30, the caucus is uh, in West Brattleboro. That's right. At the uh, Academy, Academy School. School. Yeah, and, two uh, nights. The starts at 7, the informational meeting. And uh, there's another one scheduled, too. I don't recall the exact date. I don't know. Brattlebro.org, not to be confused with brattlebrotv.org, but brattlebro.org, the municipality's website, has all that information. And, of course, uh, Representative Town Meeting will show uh, in its entirety live on BCTV, five-camera shoot. We'll have sign language interpreters there. We pulled just about everything in this office, including all uh, this stuff here, uh, out into the field and uh, try and make it work for people out there. So uh, pretty exciting. And, uh, yeah, tune it in. It'll be live. BCTV Channel 10. That's just two clicks up the dial on our government and education sister channel. Before we wrap up uh, to tonight, I'll just mention that in addition to the two women's film festival showings that uh, I mentioned about tonight, there are three more tomorrow at the Latches with Princessa at 6.30 p.m. We still live here and living downstream at 8.45 p.m. Uh, and descriptions for all those films are, again, at womensfilmfestival.org. All right, and for BCTV viewers, catch the latest program from Retreat Dr. Robert Stack entitled Chicken or Egg, a discussion on dual diagnosis. That shows at 6.30 p.m. right here on Channel 8. All right, there you go. There's the drum roll going in the background, which means uh, we got to just wrap up here. We're going to be right on time, it looks like. All right, for BCTV 545 Live, Joe Bushy, Maria Dominguez, Frederick Noyes, and everybody else that contributes to 545 Live, including Vlasta Papelka, who I... Uh, can't help but mention on every show as she works so hard to put this together. She's in the studio every day uh, as I go like this, trying to figure <laughs> out where my uh, me and Joe are. And I'm, right. I try and uh, sit just like you do, Joe, and, and try and make it work. So, Vlasta, yeah. thanks for all you do for 545 Live. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll be back Wednesday right uh, here on this Channel 8. We've got plenty more footage coming up. Uh, we'll do all our usual traffic weather shenanigans and more. All right. That's it, everybody. Shenanigans over. Night. Vous voulez bien jouer avec moi? On a une heure. Vous avez l'intention de la passer debout? C'était où? On s'inquiétait, on a appelé partout. Tu me dis que j'ai changé, mais c'est pas moi qui ai changé, maman. C'est toi. <laughs>